In this video, I will give you 10 tips related to the screen printing industry that will help you analyze, design, share, and print your CorelDRAW files more confidently and efficiently. My first tip is to use the power of a background color to make you more aware of what is going on inside the art file. This helps you see white shapes, backgrounds, and transparency so you can make decisions such as time or price on a job accordingly. There are several ways to add a background color to your document. Let me show you how. The first way is to use the rectangle tool. If you come over here to the rectangle tool and double click, it will create a rectangle the size of your page. You may need to come over to the palette and set the color. Uh, a good tip also is to lock the rectangle. So let's go back to our pick tool. And then if we right click on our selected rectangle and choose lock, it will lock it so it will not move while we're creating or designing art. To show you my next technique, I'm going to unlock this and delete it. And then we're going to come down here to the page shadow right on this edge here and double click. That's going to take us to our page options. And if we come over here to background and click solid and then come down here and choose a color, close this. Also make sure you uncheck print and export background because otherwise that color you're adding to the background would print and export. And also keep in mind when you set the setting this way, the background color carries across your whole document, not just to this page. Now that we've added a background color, we can see that this art is very different, even though they look the same. This one has a white background around it. This one has a white piece that probably could be changed to color. This one is red only, and this one has transparency because it fades away at the bottom. Uh, in the line drawing, uh, this one has a white background around it, and this one it has white shapes on the inside that can probably be changed to color. Also, our white text is now visible because it's on a gray background. Tip number nine is about wireframe view. Wireframe view sort of gives you x-ray vision inside CorelDRAW. You can see how the shapes interact and where bitmaps exist. Using wireframe can help you click and identify shapes faster. To use wireframe view, come up to the view menu and choose wireframe. In this artwork, now we can see that the waves go completely behind the whale. So if your customer asks, can you delete the whale and just use the background? Yes, you can, because you can see that the background goes all the way across. And in here also, you can tell that this bottom clip art is vector because you can see all his lines and details. And this one is a bitmap because he's grayscale. To get out of wireframe view, come back up to the view menu and click enhanced. Tip number eight is to learn the power of power clips. Learning all the tools in CorelDRAW can take a little time, but if you learn power clips sooner, it will help you to get around learning some of the shape commands because you can use power clips to hide shapes non-destructively versus editing them with the shape commands. A lot of beginners don't know about power clips, so what they do is create one object to hide another. But if you learn power clips, it's just one click to create what you need, sometimes. So, for example, I created this Italian flag with some stars, and I want to put it in the shield to make it look like this. So we select our flag, go to Object, click Power Clip, click Place Inside Frame, you get a little arrow, and point to the object you want to put it in, and click. And in seconds, it's inside our Power Clip. And if you need to edit the colors, the shapes, or move the stars around, you just have to edit the Power Clip and change it around to be what you need. For more details about Power Clips, visit the Corel Discovery Center for a full tutorial. Tip number seven is to learn Power Trace. Power Trace turns bitmaps or JPEGs into editable vector shapes. Vector art gives you so much more usability and sometimes tracing gives you instant, perfectly good vector art, depending on the resolution of the bitmap. So in this example, they look exactly the same, but they're not. If we go in wireframe, the left is a bitmap. And with, in seconds, you can trace it with Power Trace down to Vector, which once it's Vector, you can change color, size, and much, much more. So for example, on this one, if we wanted the text to now be blue, we could come over here and select the text and then change it to blue. To get to the Power Trace feature inside CorelDRAW, select a bitmap, go to the Bitmaps menu, and look for Outline Trace. Here's the basic options to get you started for Power Trace. To learn more about PowerTrace, visit the Corel Discovery Center for a more detailed tutorial. Tip number six is about opening this Pantone Spot Color Palette and setting it as my default. So to get to the palettes, go to Window, 
Dockers and scroll down all the way to past my screen here. It's off the screen for you. It's called Palettes. Click on it. It will open up this Palette Manager. Now, if we come over here and go to the Palette Libraries and open that, then open the Spot, then open Pantone, and then Pantone Plus, and click on Solid Coated, and the palette will pop on the screen. I'm going to grab it by the arrow, the little dots on the end here, and drag it off off the, the uh, connected to the interface because I need to show you the option, and it'll be off my screen. So to set the default, click here and choose Set as Default, and now I can put it back in where I need it. And all my spot colors are ready to use to do my screen printed job. Tip number five is to use the eraser tool to erase vectors and bitmaps. The trick with the eraser tool is to select the object first before you select the eraser tool. So we have our pick tool and we're gonna select the black haunted house part. And now to get to the eraser tool, if you click this little black arrow under on the crop tool, there's the eraser tool with a shortcut of X. Let's select it. And now we can come over here and erase this tree. A nice and quick, easy edit. Now, if we also want to edit this and re erase this arrow on this bitmap photo, come back to our pick tool, select the bitmap. Now go back to the eraser tool and erase the arrow. And in seconds, we have quick edits that are ready to go. Tips four and three kind of go together. If you share a file with a customer or a vendor, and you know they're not gonna edit it, you should probably convert the fonts to curves, meaning make them shapes and they're not live text anymore because their computer won't have the same fonts as yours most likely. So in order to convert some text to curves, let's select the text, go to object, and convert to curves. And the shortcut is control Q. I use this all the time. Let's do that again. Let's select it and let's use the shortcut control Q. And in seconds, our font is ready to share with someone else. But in tip number three, we need to make a note of what those fonts are before we convert them. Because if I select on this text now, it is a curve, it is not fonts. So I wouldn't know what the name of that was if the customer wanted to change that to Lady Tigers. But if I have my note in my file or a backup file that I saved that wasn't converted to curves, you'd be ready to edit that. Tip number two, shortcuts. I love shortcuts. Shortcuts will save you time and help you be more efficient in creating and editing art. My favorite shortcuts in CorelDRAW are the alignment shortcuts. With one key, you can easily align things in seconds with no extra docker or buttons. I also use shortcuts for repeated over and over steps like import, open, print, save, convert to curves, and things like that. You can even make a shortcut for yourself for the wireframe view, which I use often, and you can set that to W in one click, wireframe is on. There is a video on customizing the workspace in the Corel Discovery Center. Be sure to check it out. Let me show you how to use those alignment shortcuts. If I want to align these red lines, let's lasso them all. And if I want to align to the left, I can hit L. And if I want them aligned to the right, I hit R. And if you look in any of the menus, anytime there's a shortcut key, it's listed on the right-hand side in the menu. So that's where I'm getting these letters from. If I wanted them centered, I can hit C. I can also lasso artwork and center it. So if I lasso it all and hit C, it's centered. And if, or if I want to center two objects with their centers, I can select one object, shift and select another object. I can do C and E and it will center them to each other. My number one tip is to learn about print preview. Learn where it is and how to get to it and how to use it to your advantage to prevent printing mistakes. Let's jump to another page to review the print preview feature of CorelDRAW. Now let's go to file and print. And the first button I recommend opening up in here is the small print preview button with these black arrows. This will be a truly interactive window based on your settings you set in the print dialog box. Next, let's go to the separations tab and see how it's kind of interactive. So we're now we're on the black separation, but if we want to see what's on the blue separation, the window visually changed so we can see what we got. And if we see, need to see more detail, click on the print preview button to open the large print preview window. And in here, we can even zoom in more to make sure things are, are looking the way we want them to look. When you're ready to close print preview, come up here to the close print preview button. So don't forget to use print preview before printing to know the results you're gonna get before hitting print. Thank you for watching. 
If you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to the, our tutorial page on the Discovery Center. Here you can download a written copy of this tutorial and the exercise file to follow along. You will also find other helpful tutorials on CorelDRAW.